Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2019 horror documentary, Twisted Tale, The Unmaking of Spookies. And I believe it's only available on the Blu-ray that Vinegar Syndrome had released for Spookies, the movie. I actually have a review of the movie Spookies on my channel at the moment, but I had been wanting to dig into the documentary they included on here because Spookies, if you guys are not familiar, has an insane story behind it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's, um, I just wanted to hear uh, how other people, uh, well, or how people who were involved with the film actually felt about things. And, and it does that pretty well with the documentary. Although one of the things that I don't like about the documentary that I would argue is that it doesn't touch on both sides of the story. It's mainly just from the side of the people who shot the original footage for the film and then were kind of kicked off the project and then they went and got someone else. I think there may be one person who was interviewed for this who was from the second crew who finished the film up, um, but even in that point, they weren't interviewed a whole lot. So, um, you know, th I know this may not be the fault of the people who made the documentary, but it's just one glaring thing that is missing from the film. It's very one-sided. But... That said, it's still very interesting, and it's still worth watching once, so I'm going to talk about it. I'm not really going to get into many spoilers with it, if it, it's especially if people want to watch it on their own. So uh, It's directed by Glenn Baisley, who did films like Fear of the Dark, The Tenement, Sins of the Father, and Tales of Light and Dark, uh, as well as directed by Michael Gingold, who's done Elmer's Turf, the New York City locations of brain damage. I want to see that. Uh, the Road Leads to Terror, The Locations of Last House, and a few documentaries about Alice Sweet Alice, which is a film that I need to see. So um, I like the sound of these documentaries. I need to check them out. Um, like I said, it's an extra on the Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray, which I highly recommend this because I think that's the only way you can get Spookies is through Vinegar Syndrome's Blu-ray re release. And it is 100% worth watching and worth owning because it's one of those kind of so bad it's good films. There's an opening quote with this film, which is, Rarely, even in horror movies, has there been such a gathering of ineptitude under one title. Actually, Spooky's original uh, originally was titled Twisted Souls, but that's another story, and, unfor and fortunately for us, nobody's telling it. So that's just how they kind of start it, which gives you an idea of what to expect with the documentary of it being very negative about what happened with it, mainly about the financier, who was the person who, it sounds like, caused all the issues with the actual film by trying to get too involved with it when he didn't really... I mean, I, I was going to say he didn't really have a right to. I mean, it was his money, so I guess he kind of had a right to, but it was a bad idea because he didn't have the filmmaking ability that the people actually shooting the footage had. So uh, it, it became a mess. Uh, some of the guys involved uh, had low-level involvement with Dawn of the Dead, which was interesting. And also, one of the guys had actually worked doing some effects on Day of the Dead with Tom Savini. So that's pretty cool. It does give you a good idea of why the practical effects in uh, and why the creature design looks so good in the film Spookies. And that's one of the things that hit me when I watched the actual movie is for how messed up it is and for how unknown the film is. Uh, it looks, I mean, it looks, the practical effects look amazingly good. You would not assume that level of practical effects for a film that has kind of been forgotten for quite some time. But, you know, it's because of all the problems. The financier seemed very confused about what he wanted with the film. And I think that was one of the biggest problems that kind of makes itself known within the documentary is that he kept changing things all the time and saying, well, what if we do this? And what if we do this? And just like random ideas. Um, he said no nudity in the beginning, no gore and no zombies. Uh, but also said that he wanted it to be just like the evil dead, which literally you can't have both. Like you can't have a movie like the evil dead and not have, I mean, you can not have nudity, but you can't have gore and you can't have zombie type things. I know evil dead's more of like possession, but um, zombie type things. Well, in the end, when the film goes to the second crew to finish it off, they use zombies. So then all of a sudden that changed. So the guy, you know, he changed his mind, but there's so many crazy things. Like there was at one point 
where they said that he came in and was just like, hey, I got great news. I can get my hands on a monkey suit. And they're like, okay. And he's just like, I think we should put it in the film. It's like, how? Like, that doesn't fit. Like, like those types of things where you just, like, randomly throw things out. And he's just like, I thought of this random thing. We should put this in. And everyone's just like, how are we even supposed to react to that? So, yeah. Um, it's cool to get some insight into things that were supposed to happen in the film but didn't. That's another thing is it's good. The docu or the interviews are good because you get some ideas on things on how the film was supposed to be done, how uh, scenes that were supposed to have been shot that weren't shot were supposed to go, how the whole thing was supposed to be edited together, basically, and, you know, as a whole be presented as a film. As a film. So I like that aspect of it. They have a good amount of detail in how some props and practical effects were made, too, which I quite enjoyed. You know, some of the people who made those things were talking about how they achieved it. Uh, the level of work that was put into it is pretty insane, and it, it, it just makes you even more sad for the people who really worked hard on the film because of how everything turned out. It just went, it, it was a messed up situation, and that's one of the main reasons to watch the documentary. They go over the filming location, which is still standing, and it isn't actually in bad shape. It's actually been kind of um, refurbished to a degree. It's been kept up pretty well, so I think it was really cool for them to kind of um, go over it now. They kind of showed now what it's looking like, but also they did this cool thing where they were showing like different rooms of it as it looks now and then showing scenes, like stills of scenes that were shot in the, that exact location. So it was cool to kind of like see it as it is now and get your bearings as to, oh, okay, that's where this happened within the film and that and it was in this room that this happened in the film. So that was pretty cool. I enjoyed that. Um. There are some stories told about strange happenings on the shooting location. I wasn't big into that, but I know some people are really like, ooh, I want to know if there was, you know, if it was actually haunted or something like that. So um, I don't, you know, that's not my realm. I don't really care about stuff like that, except for the show Cursed Films on um, on Shudder because they go a little bit further than that. It's, it's way more interestingly done. But they do talk about briefly some some things that happen on the set which some people may find very interesting so that's good there's some interesting stories about people screwing around on the set that's another thing you know people just having fun messing around and pulling pranks being silly i enjoyed that it kept things a little bit light uh, it was a good way to kind of offset all, all the anger in the film um because there are some people interviewed who some people interviewed were kind of like Sucky things happened, it kind of is what it is, and it seemed like they were kind of over it. But then there were other people who were just still pissed. Still pissed to this day. And one of the people, uh, even, I think at one point she said, I hope, uh, about the financier, I hope he's rotting in hell or something like that. Or like, he can go to hell. It was, I mean, it's intense. Uh, but, I mean, I guess I understand to a degree that the anger, because it kind of seems like it dis potentially destroyed some people's careers after that film because a bunch of people involved with it were looking at it as this could be a nice jumping off point if this is successful for a further career in the film industry so for it to have gone as poorly as it did not good uh, apparently the financier would show up on set and suggest all sorts of wacky stuff to throw into the film like i was talking about the whole monkey suit thing but also that's where the fart sequence came from with the mud people. That was his idea. He was big into fart jokes, apparently. So it was he insisted that that be in there. Now, I think it's funny in the film. I think that's one of the things that didn't work if they wanted it to be a more serious film, which initially they did. But it works now as a so bad it's good film. So I, I'm glad it's in there. Uh, but I understand the frustration with it, having been in there in the first place. You can, oh, I already talked about the hostility you can tell with the people being interviewed. Not all of them, but some. It's talked about at length how the Spookies finished product screwed many people out of the future industry opportunities. Yeah, that's a sad part like I was talking about. That's really sad to realize there's some really hardworking, talented people and they just could have gone somewhere and didn't because of this messed up opportunity. Overall, I say it's worth watching uh, for the information, but it kind of needs to be cut down because it's about, it's like an hour and 40 minute runtime, and it seems like it kind of rehashes some of the same stuff and it could could definitely be cut down. 
especially for a film like this. Now, that said, uh, I did have a few problems with it technically. There were some audio issues, especially like certain people sounded different. I don't know if they were using different audio equipment with the interviews or what, but one person in particular, their <clears throat> their audio did not sound good with their interview. It was kind of um, a little bit uh, um, gravelly as they were talking, and it, it just, the quality was not very good. Also, uh, the transitions to move to the next clip of an interview are not handled well as at all. Uh, it's one of those things where, you know, if you're if you're talking to a person, you should be looking for kind of like a clean break, or you should um, cut away to like some footage of the film and then come back. So it's like a, a, a fresh point to pick up with the interview, uh, but they didn't do that. A lot of times what they did is if they wanted to skip portions of the interview, they would just keep it on the person and then you would just kind of see like a dissolve of the of the um, of the scene into the next one. And so you're seeing like two of the person as one of them dissolves out and the other one comes in like it it was bad. And 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 this is this is, came out in 2019. So like it's easier to not do that. So, yeah, some technical stuff. It's not the best-looking documentary. You can tell it's very low budget. Um, so, you know, the compelling thing is, uh, is the stories that are told in this. It's, it's not the execution of the documentary itself. Um, I wish it was executed better, but it is what it is. That's what we got. I'm happy enough with it, I will say that. So, those are my feelings on Twisted Tale, The Unmaking of Spookies. Uh, if anyone else has seen this, I'd love for you to make some comments down here about it. Give me your opinions. But also, if you just want to talk about Spookies, you can do that on here. You can do that on the review video of the film. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to go ahead and rate this out of five stars with half stars in play. I'm going to just, I'm going to do a two and a half star on this. You know, it's not terrible, but it's not the greatest. And I, I pretty much feel in the middle on it. So that's where I'm putting it. Anyway, uh, thanks for checking this out. Do me a quick favor, though. Hit that subscribe button. That is the best way to repay me if you have enjoyed any video I've ever done because I'm not making money doing this or anything. So um, I get paid in motivation, and what motivates me is when people subscribe to the channel because a lot of my views come from people who aren't subscribed, and it would help me out a lot if you were subscribed when you're watching. Um it doesn't cost you anything. It's like literally painless. So if you do me that favor, that'd be great. And if you are going to hit that notification bell, because then you'll know whenever I'm putting up new reviews or unboxings or doing the live stream. But regardless, I do appreciate you taking the time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.